So, hi everyone. My name's Nigel Bayliss. I'm a Senior Principal Product Manager in the Data Warehousing Product Management team. There's a link to this deck if you want to get it now. Don't worry if you miss it. Um, I'm going to give you the link again at the end with a few others uh, to keep you going. Um, so, the subject today is high performance bulk data loading. Um, to put it in a little bit of context, um, this is actually part two of two. Um, so there was a link to, uh, I'll give you a link to part one. There's no need to watch them in any order. So they are separate from one another. Part one is talking about loading data in near real time um, using things like Java or, or Python or what have you. So it's a slightly different topic, but it is related. Um, so the talk itself is I'm trying as much as possible to speak from the developer's perspective rather than the DBAs. But again, if you are a DBA, it should hopefully be useful to you as well. Um, but I, I guess you'll recognize more of the concepts. I think it's fair to say. Um, the idea is, is really to help you make the right choices to help the database administrator help you. And um, you will get a little bit more down in the database in this one than the last one. And I think the reasons should become pretty clear as to why. Um, I want to help you avoid common gotchas or at least understand the choices you make do have implications down the line to give you an idea what those implications are. And I'd also like you to help you make better choices early on so that you can avoid iteration down the line or especially post delivery where you, you might be starting to apply sticking plaster. I really want to avoid that situation and just give you some steers. Um, my, my kind of buzzword, well, my buzz phrase really is good practice, not best practice, because what I really want to do is not kind of spoon feed you um, the sort of pre-digested facts, if you like, do this X, Y. I don't think there's necessarily any such thing as the best as best practice. What I want you to do is to understand the principles. And I think that allows you to make your own best practice. That, that enables you to create best practice that is applicable to you to your particular situation. So the scope, I, because Oracle of course is such a massive product with lots of capabilities and lots of options, um, I like to really just nail down the scope a little bit here to, to clearly define the boundaries of what I'm gonna talk about. Um, so what I am talking about is um, systems where you have a periodic arrival of files containing large numbers of rows that you need to load in bulk. So I'm assuming you have some kind of file system staging area containing data files on disk and you want to load those in bulk quick, as quickly as possible. So it's, this is not near real time. There's some lag between the feed file or whatever it is arriving in your file staging area and being loaded into the database and becoming visible. Um, you may have come across the concepts of conventional and direct path loads. I'm going to cover both. So there are different ways of loading data into the database and loading data directly into um, live tables, tables or staging tables. So what I mean by a staging table is essentially a separate part of your database where you're loading data in, staging it and doing more manipulation before you then push it into live. But you also have the capability of bulk loading directly into live tables as well. So it covers both of those. Um, it's a fairly low level perspective, I guess, but the principles are definitely applicable if you use um, extract, transform and load tools as well, because of course, under the covers, ETL tools use a lot of these principles. And I guess that if you know uh, how they work under the covers, that I'm hoping will help you understand what they're doing when you're choosing various options when you configure them. So the agenda is, I'll talk very quickly about file staging areas, then we'll work on, move on to my recipe, if you like, simple recipe for loading data, uh, talk about external tables, what they are, and then a slightly trickier topic actually to do with parallel reading and writing data and um, how that works. And if you're using direct path load, we are gonna look at the implications of doing that so that you understand what you're doing if you decide to use it. I'm, I want to give you a steer as to what the implications are. Um, and then we'll look at some uh, little tricks with partition exchange loading, very briefly anyway, to give you the idea of what it does. And then uh, we'll move on to some recommendations. So file staging areas. So this, remember, is where you've got some feeds arriving. So you've got the data that you want to, to load into the database and you're staging it somewhere on a file system. Um, 
just double check time recording. Yeah, sorry, I was just checking I am recording. Um, so this is a file staging area. So we've got data files arriving. And um, remember the first principle, if your file staging area is not fast, then you're not going to be able to load data fast. You have to be able to read a fast staging area quickly, otherwise you're really broken from the beginning. So we are straying a little, I guess, into system architecture here. But it's, it's useful to be aware of this, of course, because inevitably you'll be loading data and you, someone will be telling you it's just not loading fast enough. And generally speaking, that means they blame the database. <laughs> I mean, that's the way of the world. But um, it's useful to realize, of course, is that you are attempting to read data from disk for, for some kind of storage. So is the underlying storage scalable? It has to be. If you're, if you're loading gigabytes a second, for example, that underlying storage has to be pretty substantial. And if you're using network attached storage, what is the network infrastructure between the storage and you? So how, it's useful to be able to be aware of that and also to get some idea of how you can figure it out for yourself. So I'll, I'll cover that later. Uh, so the simple recipe here, and this is quite different from part one. So in this part, really you're going to do less in code. And what I mean by code, I'm really talking about things like Java or C or what have you. Think, don't think loops, don't think if then else's. It, what you're attempting to do is to do more with the database and use more of the power of the database. So you're using bulk SQL statements. Uh, what I mean by bulk SQL statements, you'll see in a minute and how you transform using SQL. I'll show you that a little bit in a minute. So in other words, what you're gonna use is use the power of SQL because I think possibly sometimes that's forgotten, but SQL is incredibly powerful and incredibly good and incredibly performant at moving data and transforming it from one place to another. It's not just query. So it's really good for that. So I want to, if you like, emphasize that here. Parallel execution. Um, I'm not going to dive into this too deeply. So parallel execution, I'm not going to rely on, you, rely on you having a huge understanding of this, but I am going to give you a link at the end so that if you need to know more about that, you can find that out. But essentially parallel execution, as you probably realize, of course, is that you use multiple processes to read and write data. And Oracle gives you that, gives you that out of the box. So I'm, again, proposing that you use that power that Oracle gives you. And bulk SQL... That means insert into a table, selecting from another table. It's, it's a one statement. It does all the work you need. Talk about, a little bit more about it in a minute. Again, create a new table or select from another table. Another great bulk operation. Very fast, very powerful. We'll see why in a minute. If you're using an ETL tool, it's again, as I mentioned, same underlying principles. They generally use these kinds of SQL statements under the covers. So it all makes, it all hangs together, if you like. Um, the emphasis on the, this presentation is loading data, but it also ap applies to moving data inside the database. So the principles are really very similar. So I'm really just going to say loading, but in your mind, you can say loading, moving. Okay. So just, just to really clear the way for me uh, simplifying a little bit what I'm saying. So if you want to move, move data inside a database, you can use very similar principles and to the principles outlined for loading data. So, and there is a reason for that actually, which I'm coming to in just a moment, but you may have heard of things like SQL Loader, which is a really nice utility for loading files on the file system into an Oracle database. But my proposal here is use external tables always go here first this is a really nice mechanism and i'll go into the reasons why and how you use it in a moment essentially what it does is you create here's the syntax on the right where we create an external table but once you've created this it just looks like an oracle table so you can select from it you can query it but what's physically happening behind the scenes is Oracle is reading that data from your file staging area. So it's a really nice way to read data that you've staged in the file staging area. And you read it as if it's an Oracle table. Now, this is a, a really, really powerful thing to be able to do. So I'd like to go into that. Why, why do you use them? What's so great about external tables, really? So first of all, it's SQL. So what you do is you use SQL to read data from your file staging area into your 
database. So in this case, I'm inserting into my live table data that I've got sitting on disk. That's essentially what's happening. It's just SQL. And you can see now what I mean by it, that this looks like a move. So you, it looks like you're moving data from one table to another inside the database. But in this case, I'm reading data from outside to the inside. So it's just SQL. Something that's often forgotten but is incredibly powerful. You can run multiple insert statements in one transaction for multiple files. Once you're happy that that's all worked, you can commit the glot in one go. It's very important, for example, if you're loading directly into live tables in your database. It means that you can load all your dependent data, you're happy it's correct, you then commit the transaction. This is a really powerful mechanism, obviously. It's, it makes it's a viable way of loading data directly from an external device disk into your database live tables. It's a very nice mechanism. Scalability is built in. So if you do want to use parallelism to read those files on disk, you can. So Oracle will fire up multiple processes for you and use parallel reads to read all of that data from your file staging area very quickly transform as well so you can tra even transform the data on the fly as it comes in use again as i said the power of sql to transform uh, that data on the fly straight into your table um, error trapping important thing this is really nice actually in that if you can set uh, a reject limit on an external table so for example you can accept some bad records or you can accept none. So in this case, I don't accept any bad records in my data files. So in this data file, I've got lovely data followed by something bad. And I immediately know that I get an aura exception thrown. So again, it's a nice mechanism to protect your data on the way in so that at least you do know it's going to fit within your data model and you've got no bad data. You know that the data that the data you're loading is at least at a, a basic level clean. And the other really nice thing about external tables is they really are ETL friendly. So if you have um, a transformation uh, tool, you're generally going to be drawing little diagrams like this where you're moving and transforming data between one table and another. It doesn't matter to the tool that that data is outside the database. So again, it's a really nice little thing to be able to use. Um, uh, this is a great trick, actually. I'm not sure how well known this is, um, but uh, you can create a preprocessor on an external table. What am I doing here? I'm basically saying uh, I'm running a script as I read my uh, data files in my file staging area and these data files are zipped so i can read and unzip them on the fly um, this is a great technique because what it does is um, once you zip a file of course it's a lot smaller so if that file is for example on network attached storage you need to bring less data across that network or if your disks are very busy, you don't need to read so much data from the disk. What you are doing is using some more CPU because uh, unzip does burn CPU. But what you're doing is exchanging CPU and disk and network band bandwidth. You're kind of tipping the balance using more CPU, but you're using less disk and less network bandwidth potentially. So it's a, it's a really nice little trick. Um, just bear in mind that um, we have multiple file locations here. We have multiple data files. Uh, this is because we can't always cut data files in half and read them with two separate processes. So bear that in mind. Um, it, it is a good idea if you're using these kind of preprocessors to split your data files into multiple pieces and then read them all at the same time. Okay, so this is a really is a definitely advised looking at this. It's a great it's a great trick. Um, now, parallel read and parallel write. This is definitely again something where I see people stumbling a little bit on understanding um, the fundamentals of how this works. So, I just want to clear that up. Um, there's quite a lot of information here. So, um, and of course, given that the, the talk is quite short, there is a lot of information, a lot to take in. But I hope that you know when you see the thing upload, uh, this uh, video uploaded, you can step through it and uh, consider it in some kind of detail. But um, so parallel read 
means that I'm selecting in parallel from my external data. So in other words, I'm using multiple processes to read my file staging area. Um, so this is a nice parallel read. In fact, this is a way where you can find out something about your file staging area. Why not just count the records in your external staging area? See how long that takes. You can see straight away there the kind of speed you can read that file staging area. And you can also see the effects of changing the parallelism. There's, I, I'm a big believer in, in right sizing your parallelism. So in other words, don't go crazy. Think sensibly about how many processes you want to read your data and experiment. There's, it's very easy just to run a select count over your external table to find out how fast you can read those records because the count star is going to have to read all the records in that data file. Try it. Try different degrees of parallelism. You rapidly get a feel for the kind of performance your systems can give you. So that's parallel read. Um, the, the other side of this is that I'm running an insert and this is a conventional path insert. So this is actually a serial write. So I'm just writing through one process into the table. Okay. So this is a great approach if you want to write data into live, live tables. You're using conventional path insert. I'll cover that a little bit more, a bit more in a minute. It's a very easy technique. I'm reading my uh, file system staging area very quickly using parallelism. Bear in mind, putting a high degree of parallelism isn't going to be magic. It's not necessarily going to be useful because you're writing serially into your live table. So what generally happens is you're waiting for the data to be written into the live. And this, pit, this reading part isn't... Um, you're not waiting for that. So using a high degree of parallelism probably isn't going to help you much. But again, it's something you can experiment with. Okay. So staging. So in this case, staging in this instance means I want to create a table inside my database, which is a copy of all that data in my outside my database in my file staging area. This is really a great technique. Create table, my internal staging table, a select in parallel for my external data. Uh, this is a parallel read and a parallel write. It uses a direct path load, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's pretty much the fastest way of getting a data into a database, uh, hands down, extremely quick. So this is, um, if, you're if you really want to get a data into a database fast, this is it. Parallelism in this case is likely to help. Uh, you can experiment with that because it's very system dependent really of how high you need to crank this number because it depends on how many CPU cores you have, how powerful your disk is, all those sorts of things, sort of system architecture thing. Um, now this is another approach. This is if you want to insert data into an existing table. Um, this is called a parallel read and a parallel write. You're a using what's called a direct path right again, and you're appending data into your table, in this case, a sales staging table. I'm also reading in parallel as well. So this is a very high performance technique, but it uses direct path load, and that does have some implications. So I'll cover that in a minute, but it's a really, again, a very fast way of getting data into a database. It's very similar to create table as select that we just looked at. High degree of parallelism, again, is something that can definitely be useful, definitely can give you more performance. Okay, uh, It's often a good fit to use this with partition tables. I'll come to that in a minute. So direct path load, just to clear up that. Um, direct path load um, is a way of reducing CPU and storage utilization when you insert data into a database. Uh, it reduces the amount of redo that you generate and uh, the amount of transactional data that you generate from the database. But my suggestion is don't use it just as a go faster stripe. Think about whether you need to use it. It does have some implications, which I'll cover. Um, direct path load is used by create table of select, which really is doesn't really have implications it's just something you can just use it's just really easy to use it's really fast really effective so there are implications of using direct path but those implications don't really apply to create tables select that that's just you 
just a great thing to use. Um, so conventional path is where you use insert statements, the data, the rows that you write go into the buffer cache, uh, into a piece of memory, and the database writer writes those changes to disk. The log writer writes the transaction entries into the redo logs, which are then copied and archived away. So what we essentially do is we write the transactions into the redo, and then we copy them into the archive logs as well. So that's typically what a production system will look like. Direct path load is faster because it writes the data directly into the database data files. So it's a very fast mechanism. It bypasses the buffer cache, so you're going to save some overhead. So that's one of the fundamental reasons why direct path load is generally faster or uses less resource. There's also the ability to use a no logging. What no logging does is it reduces the amount of transaction entries we write into our redo into our redo logs. So again, no logging can make a difference. It can reduce the amount of data we write to disks. Although, um, if you just do a simple test of insert uh, with with and without no logging, you might not see a particularly significant difference in execution time. It's very system dependent. It's very dependent on how your storage behaves and how heavily utilized your storage is behaves. So just just bear in mind that be be cautious of these sort of simplistic tests where you're just testing one versus the other. Try and understand what you're doing, if you like, and then that will help you to understand things like the elapsed time differences of one versus the other. Um, I mention this very quickly because it's, it is quite an area of confusion. When you're using direct path uh, with logging and no logging, if you're running in no archive log mode, it's always no logging even if you put logging. So this can be a little bit confusing if you are doing tests and you're comparing, say, the performance of a production system and a development system because production systems generally do run in archive log mode. So they generally do have archive redo logs. And then logging and no logging in production systems will make a big difference or make a difference at least. Whereas in a development system, the difference between logging and no logging you might not see. So just bear that in mind whether you're running in archive log or no archive log mode. So the implications, if you're going to use direct path load, and really I'm talking about insert here. So if you're inserting data using direct path load in parallel, using insert append, um, it does have some implications. First of all, there are locks that are applied to the table when you do that, and that might affect any concurrent insert, update, delete activity you have on your table. So if you are using direct path load into a live table, bear in mind you could be blocking other transactions for the duration of the load uh, from updating or changing rows in that table. So that's why direct path load, you need to think about whether it's appropriate for you to use it on live tables or whether it's more appropriate for you to use it on staging tables. Okay. Another, another interesting one is that um, data must be committed before being read. What, what I mean by that is that if you insert into a table using direct path and you try and select from it just after you've done that, you'll get a, an exception read. You have to commit. So there has to be, you insert direct path load, then you commit, and then you select, then that's fine. Okay, so if you suddenly, for example, have a batch job that um, relies on inserting and reading that data, it could fail if you decide to retrofit direct path load. Okay, so just bear that in mind if you are using conventional path load and you now want to switch to using a higher performance direct path load. Okay, just bear in mind that you can get exceptions if your batch flow inserts and selects without an intervening commit. And that applies only to the session, by the way. So other sessions that are outside the scope of your batch job are not going to be affected by that. So you don't need to worry about your load breaking something elsewhere that's that's definitely not the case this is just for the the batch stream that's doing the insert and select there are some space management considerations um, the bottom line of that is that you should if you're using direct path load you tend to load a lot of data infrequently not tiny amounts of data frequently it tends to not make sense 
to keep loading little amounts of data using direct path load all right so aim, you're aiming to put a lot of data in infrequently um, or in fact using uh, partitioning which we'll come to in a minute um, bear in mind with um, if you are using no logging um, that the transaction entries aren't written so you have to be aware that if you are writing data into a data file and you lose that data file that data isn't in a transaction log somewhere so you can lose it so just be aware it's kind of rare but it's not inconceivable that if you are writing for example a massive sales table onto disk with no logging you need to back it up um, if you lose where you've written that data it has gone because it's not in a transaction log so if you are using no logging bear that in mind think about uh, backing up the data once it's in or at least make sure it's re-runnable, re that you re can rerun the batch job should you use the entire data file. Pretty rare occurrence, but I, I do want to mention it. It's something that's worth thinking about. There are some restrictions on triggers because sometimes they have to be disabled. So again, there's quite a lot of detail there. It's something you might need to consider looking at the documentation for. So these are sort of ideal use, face, uh, use cases for direct path load. Um, that's loading staging tables, I already mentioned that, parallel create table or select, fantastic. Insert into non-index target is ideal. So if you're using insert, um, it's great if the table is non-indexed, it tends to be much faster if there are no indexes on the table. Or another approach is you can drop indexes first, load the data and then recreate the indexes. Sometimes that is actually faster, sometimes. Um, but again, it's something you, you can, check out it does depend on the number of indexes you have essentially um, it's very good for moving copying transforming data around inside the database it's really really great for that um, if you're writing into a table just bear in mind that you can have locks and that if there's concurrent insert update delete activity then one session may end up waiting for another it's great for partitioned live tables which we'll look at in a minute and in particular partition exchange loading so if you're really at the high end and you really need to get data in super fast partition data partition exchange loading is going to be something you might want to look at so i'm just going to whip across that so partition exchange loading so uh, we have a sales table which is partitioned into quarter one quarter two quarter three uh, partitioning basically means that physically we're going to store the sales table in separate pieces but the sales table itself to your application just looks like a standard table it doesn't look anything special but what we can do is add a new partition to it and next to it we can do create table as select from our external data a new table and fill it with data. We can insert more data into it if we want. Again, all using direct path load. So it's really good for direct path load. It's really fast. It uh, is a lower overhead on the database um, compared with conventional paths. So it's a really nice way to get the data into the database. We might want to index that data and then we exchange. And this is a very fast operation. We're not actually physically moving the data. We're just doing a little trick in the data dictionary to switch. Uh, so now that table becomes part of our, that Q4 table becomes part of our sales table and we'll rename it Q4 so it becomes a partition. So it's a really fast way of loading data in direct path and exchanging it and making it magically appear in our sales table and then we'll drop the partition that we originally had. So that's the process of partition exchange loading. That is essentially the fastest way of getting data into a data, data warehouse, for example. It's a really good mechanism. So recommendations are, uh, to summarize, use the database, use its capabilities, use bulk SQL operations. Um, if you're using insert, consider using the conventional path load first, really because it's very straightforward. It goes into live tables. You don't have any space considerations. Um, if you find later on that you do need to retrofit direct path load, that is something that isn't going to be tremendously difficult. It takes some work, but it's not something that generally customers are having particular problems with doing. Um, if you do need to use, if you do want to use conventional load and you want to scale out and use multiple processes, you can do that. Um, it's not as nice as Oracle parallelism, which kind of just does it for you. But 
you know, if you do want to use conventional path loads, there's nothing to stop you using parallel multiple streams or writing into the database at once. Of course, Oracle does allow you to do that without any problems. So that's a possibility. So if you are looking at direct path load, ask the DBA, check. Is it likely to be necessary given the volumes of data you're loading into your database? Get a feel for, if you like, the, the order of magnitude of the problem you're trying to solve. You might find that the DBA might just laugh at you and say, you know, this, this amount of data is trivial. So it's a good idea to, to get some kind of check and obviously think about future scalability as well. Um, Direct path load is very common if you're in very large database and data warehousing environments. So generally speaking, if you are working in, in that space, direct path load is generally something that everyone is expecting and uh, is common and you know, you, you know that you're in that zone really. Direct path load, as I say, saves machines resources, um, reduces load times, especially if other resources on the machine are constrained. So if the disk is already busy, you know, if the disk is very busy, using direct path load can alleviate that. Or if the CPUs are very busy, again, direct path load is very good at reducing uh, the amount of those uh, resources that are consumed. And it's very good for staging tables. Really, if you're, if you're staging, if you're creating a staging area inside your database, direct path load, I would say, is pretty much a given. You know, it really is very, very good for that. Um, again, if you're looking at more live tables, it's for loading large volumes of data less infrequently. When I say infrequently, I'm being very vague about that. But, you know, maybe you're loading data daily or weekly or something like that. You're not loading small numbers of rows every 15 minutes. That's more of a conventional path load than the direct path load. And highest level performance are to use techniques like partition exchange loading. Okay, so that's direct path load with partition exchange loading is pretty much the way to get data in faster than any other mechanism. So if you want more, the slide deck is linked to at the top. Um, there are some examples that I've posted on GitHub. So if you want some real specific examples that you should well, I hope you'll be able to get working immediately. They're, they're pretty straightforward, um, uh, simple to set up. So if you go there, there's, there's actually um, examples of creating an external table and then some of the different uh, SQL statements and what have you. So it's just a kind of fast start, really. Um, if you want to know about this in real detail, um, because this, of course, is really just a look, a look across the top, of course. But if you want to know really the detail, there's, there's a white paper called Performance Scalable Data Loading in the Oracle Database 12C. There's a link there. That tells you everything you might ever want to know about this. And particularly, it helps you with things like how space management works and what have you and all these different techniques. It's really, really solid amount of detail in there. If it's parallel execution that you haven't got much experience with, I think a really good starting point is to go uh, to parallel execution with Oracle Database 12C Fundamentals. That really goes into detail about how parallel execution works and how you can use it. Uh, and then finally, um, the part one of this webcast, as I say, you can watch these in any order, but um, if you want to look at the other angle where you're using, uh, you're using code to do the work to get data into the database, part one is if you follow that link there. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and um, hope to see you all again soon. Thank you.